Hi, so in this point of time, we're going to be discussing the unit 6, which covers the topic um, of minerals and rocks. So, the lesson that we're going to be discussing are all about rock-forming minerals, igneous rocks, sedimentary rocks, and metamorphic rocks. So, let us start first with this lesson 1 which is all about the rock forming minerals. So, a rock is a combination of unique set of minerals with properties that differentiate them from others. So that means rock is a combination of different types of minerals. For example, a certain rock that you find or that you found on your surrounding it's composed of not just one type of mineral but instead it can be categorized as two or three minerals kasi nga mineral is actually i mean rock is actually an aggregate of different minerals that we can find in our surrounding so Talking about minerals, so what are the distinct properties that make each minerals unique? Okay, so first, para masabtan jud ang sa pasabut anang mineral, let us define first what a mineral is on the. Uh, kasi nga meron tayong iba't ibang definition ng minerals. When we talk about minerals, na kailangan ng ating katawan. So, that pertains to zinc or different types of vitamins and minerals na kailangan natin. Now, talking about minerals in our surrounding or in our in the earth's crust, so this pertains to kanang mga inorganic class. So, that means these are the minerals that we don't need. As, I mean, these are the type of minerals that our body doesn't need kasi nga, matatagpuan sila sa ating underground or sa ating, ating earth's crust. So, a mineral is a naturally occurring inorganic homogeneous solid with a definite chemical composition and an ordered crystalline structure. So, that means Mineral, we can find it everywhere in our surrounding, in the mountains, in the oceans, like that. So, mineral is defined also as inorganic. So, that means mineral doesn't have carbon compounds. Kasi nga, mineral is not a living thing. So, that means it doesn't have that carbon compounds na is a basic composition of living things. Like for example, human, plants, animals, or any types of living things that we can find in our environment, they are mainly composed of carbon compounds. And that is the basic attributes of living things. Na magkaroon ng carbon compounds because carbon is a uh, very important um, element in survival like you know the food that we eat they are basically composed of carbon and aside from that carbon is also the reason why there are um, fuel na ginagamit tayo ngayon or bakit meron tayong tinatawag na LPG or liquefied petroleum gas or yung mga fossil fuel. Ano pa yung mga coal natin. So, galing yun sa carbon reserves. Kasi nga, living things do have carbon compost. So, since mineral is a non-living thing, so, it is called as inorganic. Which means that it doesn't have carbon compounds on it structure or in on its chemical composition aside from that mineral also is being 
um, compared to a homogeneous solid. So that means mineral is composed of single type of solid. That means it has a uniform composition which cannot be divided further into simpler compounds. Kasi nga, single na siya eh, single solid na. So that means it cannot be divided further into different types of compounds. Kasi kung ano yung type of um, compounds na makikita natin sa isang mineral, that is obviously the uniform composition of that type of mineral. And aside from that, it has also a definite chemical composition. So, wala siyang halong ibang type of mineral. And an ordered crystalline structure. The most minerals have distinctive characteristics. Some minerals, however, are very similar that their physical properties should be examined to further correct, to further, I mean, should be examined further to make a correct identification. Okay. So, we, let us go to the physical properties of minerals. So, there are several laboratory and field techniques being used to distinguish minerals based on physical properties. So, some minerals are too small to be identified by the naked eye. That is why there is a need for a high-powered instrument such as pictographic microscope, the X-ray diffractometers or XRDs. On the other hand, there are mga minerals that are large enough to be assessed based on their physical properties. When we say physical properties, these are the properties which are observable. So, observe lang nimo without altering the composition of the mineral. Geologists commonly use physical properties such as the color, the tree, the luster, crystal habit, cleavage, fracture, hardness, specific gravity to identify materials. So later on, malalaman natin kung ano mga bang ibig sabihin ng mga properties na ito. Kasi nga, minerals are identified by using such categorizations on their physical properties. So let us start with the color. So, in Tagalog, ito yung kulay. Kulay na isang bagay, kulay na isang bato, kulay na isang tao. So, color refers to certain wavelengths of light that are reflected by the mineral. So, that means when we compared color or when we tried to observe the color of the plants, we can say that it has a green or mostly the leaves have color green now the reason for this one class is that yung uh, visible light na binibigay ng araw natin contains actually seven colors or the roy j beef now the six colors na present sa visible light they are the colors that are being absorbed by the plants. And the only color that is being reflected is the green. Kaya masasabi natin na ang kulay ng dahon ng ating mga halaman ay kulay green or kulay verde. Ganyan. So, the same also goes with minerals. Minerals have different types of color. And the color that is being reflected by the minerals are the one that we can observe. Like for example, um, ruby actually has a red color. So that means um, red is the only color that is being reflected. Tapos yung ibang kulay, yung other six colors, they are the one that are being absorbed. Kasi nga, kapag tinatawag natin being absorbed, that means, inabsorb lang yun ng mineral. Hindi na yun um, na-reflect back. So, obviously, sa Rubina case, red lang yung 
nagre-reflect na color. So, in this case, um, in this case, color is the one that is being perceived, perceived, sorry, it's being perceived by the observer. So, it is the most noticeable physical property of mineral and is often the first thing that people consider when looking for minerals as gemstones for jewelry. However, using this as sole basis for mineral identification is not enough because different minerals can have the same color. So, meron ding mga minerals class na magkakatudan lang yung kanilang color. So, in addition, color is highly affected by impurities. So, kasi nga, kapag ang isang kulay ay na nalagyan ng other impurities, so, that means, the color of the certain minerals will also vary. Mag-iiba din siya. Or, by light diffraction, if ang angle sa isa ka mineral, kaya wala, wala'y direct light na ni-enter sa iyaha, so, ma-perceive na to siya as other color. Now, if ang color pud kay na I mean if ang light pud kay to ibutang sa top no la mo lahi pud ang color ana niya so that means that the color of a certain minerals are affected when there is impurities and when there is light diffraction mineral colors can be classified into idiochromatic Allochromatic and pseudochromatic. So, self colored minerals are called idiochromatic minerals. So, that means the moment these minerals are born or the moment these minerals are created, ito talaga yung tutuong kulay niya. So, that's why it is called as idiochromatic or self colored colored minerals no matter um no matter what type of location they are or kahit kahit lagyan mo pa ng other impurities ang isang minerals the color will not vary kasi nga idiochromatic they are self colored minerals kung ano talaga yung kulay niya yun talaga yung makikita natin so their color is a diagnostic property this means that the color of mineral is constant. So, constant ang yang color. And it depends on the elements that make up their chemical structure. For example, malachite, always green. So, rhodochrosite, always red. And sulfur, always yellow. So, these are examples of idiochromatic minerals, the malachite, the rhodochrosite, and the sulfur. Now, let us proceed to, so ito yung kulay nila. So, yes, um, this one is the malachite. Ito. Tapos, ito namang isa sa center. This is the rhodochrosite. And the yellow one is the sulfur. Okay. So, for allochromatic, So, for allochromatic minerals, color is not a reliable diagnostic property since small impurities may dramatically alter their color. So, that means, kini si allochromatic minerals class, they are very sensitive. Kasi nga, kapag nahaluan lang sila ng mga tiny impurities, their color will vary. So, mag-iiba na sila kahit konti lang yung nalagay ng mga impurities. So, for example, quartz may occur in different varieties. So, this includes colorless, milky, smoky, citrine, amethyst, and rose. So, allochromatic minerals are often weakly colored or colorless in their pure state. So, yung mga allochromatic minerals class, basically, they are often mga weakly colored na sila. Kanang balinood ba ang ilahang 
color. Delete kayo sila. Wala kayo radiance dito sa ilang color. And, of course, there are also minerals na colorless. Or there are also allochromatic minerals na ang ilang original color are actually colorless. So, di ba kapag ang isang colorless, nilagyan mo lang ng tiny impurities, so you will expect that their color will vary. Kasi nga, very sensitive sila. So, which allows impurities to pervade them with color. So, of course, if the minerals are weakly colored or it has a colorless in their pure state, so adding impurities will surely vary their color, which is observable by us. So, by contrast, idiochromatic are strongly colored, which draws out any impurities in color. So, yun yung pagkakaiba ng idiochromatic and allochromatic. Kasi nga, kahit ano pong impurities na ilagay mo sa idiochromatic, hindi talaga sila magbabago. That's because their or their um, chemical structure is really very strong to draw out those impurities na nag-invade sa isa ka mineral. So, kaya nga, lalabas na lalabas din ang kanyang kulay na kulay. On the other hand, the allochromatic, they are the one which are very sensitive. Kasi nga, kahit na konting impurities lang yung ilagay mo or accidentally nahaluan siya ng impurities, then their color will vary. So, this one is an example of allochromatic mineral, which is quartz. So, sa quartz class, it can be um, colored like this. This one, ito. So, meron siyang iba't ibang variation. And it depends on the type of impurities na nag-invade sa quartz. So, it has colorless. Or, I mean, it can be colorless, milky, smoky, citrine, amethyst, and rose. Ang ganda pala ng color, I mean, ang color ng amethyst. Yes, I like this color. So, lastly is the pseudocrystalline minerals. They are the ones that is called as false colored mineral. So, that means hindi siyang totoong kulay. So, their colors are due to light diffraction. In this instance, color may be variable but is an exclusive properties of minerals. So, kasi nga yung light diffraction class, may tabo lang na siya kung ang light dili directly um I mean, dili, walay direct heat. Dili directly maigo ang mineral sa isa ka light. Like for example, um, ang light, ang, I mean, ang sikat ng araw na makikita natin in the morning is more siya pa anggel. So, that means for pseudochromatic minerals, lahi ang yung color at that angle of light rays. Same also with during noon time. So, kung noon time, since lahi na ang pud nga angle ang maigo sa minerals or ang maigo, yes, ang maigo nga light sa minerals, so that means different color na pud ang mo appear. So, I mean, any angle nga mahit si it, I mean, pseudochromatic minerals, so maglahi ang yang color. Kasi nga, they are referred to as false colored minerals. So, yung kulay na makikita natin, they are just obviously present on the outer covering. Tapos, iba na din yung makikita natin doon sa internal um, structure talaga ng isang minerals. Pero actually, ang ganda pala ng pseudochromatic minerals, oh. There are different types of ano, color nga makita na ito. More siya rainbow. Na i-7 color. Kaya nga, 
kung ang anong type class sa um, minerals ang atong makita, I mean, ang ma directly hit by light rays or by the sunlight, then it would really vary kasi nga just by observing on its um external color, meron siyang iba't ibang kulay. So, it would be harder for us to distinguish kung ano nga ba talaga yung unique color ng isang pseudochromatic mineral. So, we have here, on the left, it is the Bornite. On the center is Labradorite. And the next one is the Opal. Maganda ng kulay ng Opal. Okay, since we are done with the physical properties, specifically on the first physical properties of a mineral, which is color, let us proceed to streak. Okay, streak. Now, streak is the color of the powdered form of a mineral. So, in other words, glass, um, streak, the streak of a mineral is the color of the powder it produced when it is dragged across a streak plate. So, kung ano yung kulay ng powdered form ng isang minerals, that belongs to the type of streak it have or it has. Now, it is observed by rubbing the mineral across a streak plate. So, kailangan natin gumamit ng streak plate para ma-identify nato kung unsa ang color sa powdered form sa usa ka mineral. So, kining strict plate class, usually na ani siya yung mga rough na surface para inig-drug ni mo sa isa ka minerals, makuha ni mo ang color sa yang powdered form. Now, as shown below, the color of the mineral is not always the same as the straight color. Like for example, di ba sa sulfur, we can observe in our naked eye that sulfur has actually a yellow color. Now, if we drag the sulfur mineral in a straight plate, then we can observe na para siyang may white, something like dirty white na kulay. Same also with this one. Ito. Diba, we should expect that its powder, its powdered form should be blue. But instead, in this scenario, para siyang, iwan ko parang sky blue. Then same also with this one. Para nag-iiba yung kulay. So, bali, daily assurance class nga, ang isa ka color sa usa ka minerals na itong ma-observe, mojo na po ang color sa yung powdered form. Okay. In order for us to identify the color of its powdered form, we need to use streak plate. Kasi nga doon lang yung makikita natin. I mean, in that um, in that instrument or device mang mak makita natin kung unsa jud ang color sa yang powdered form. So for min for mineral identification, this property is more reliable than the color of the mineral of the mineral since strike is always the same so compared um compared on using the color of the mineral strike is more reliable though on identifying the specific color of a certain mineral okay so next one we're done with the streak. next physical property is luster Yes, luster. Now, luster is the appearance of mineral surface and is dependent. I'm sorry. So, luster is the appearance of a mineral surface and is dependent on how it reflects or how it reflects light. Common luster types are purely silky, dull, resinous. Or the adamantine, vitreous, or glassy, and metallic. So, in other term class, luster refers to the radiance 
to the glow or to the brightness or the shininess of a certain type of mineral. So in other words, ito yung kinang, kinang ng isang mineral. So, there are different lusters types or there are different luster types of different of of different kind of minerals and these are so key so ito daw yung so from top left to bottom left so this one is um ano ba to? Yes, tack. This is tack, which has a purely luster type. And then crystallite, crystal tile, which has silky. Microcline feldspar, which has dull luster type. Then sulfur, resinous, azurite, merchant my pagka earthy na luster type then diamond has an adamantian luster type diotase has a vitreous or my pagka glassy then pyrite has actually metallic luster type okay so ito yung um, description on the different types of luster so when we say purely, mayroon may pag may pagka pearl siya. So mineral appear the same as a pearl or the abalone shell interior. Silky, it shows similar properties with silk, may johamison siya, which has fine para parallel threads. Next one is dull. So, a mineral has a plain looking sheen. Medyo, ano siya, delicate siya, attractive ayang color. Next one is resinous. So, resinous para sa sulfur. So, its characteristic are the same with resin or chewing gum. So, may pagka, ano siya, kanang mura gugumukon siya, class. Tapos, ang structure po niya is, ano mura na, na downward. Tapos, Basta marag ka na gumaobserve na to sa chewing gum o sa resin. Yung nga na nga um, types of luster. Next one is earthy, which means minerals are opaque and looks like earth or dirt. So when we say opaque glass, these are minerals that um, that are not transparent. So that means they are not impenetrable by light or they do not allow light to pass through adamantine so this type of minerals or minerals that have adamantine luster are very shiny and brilliant katulad ng diamonds now next one is vitreous or glassy so vitreous luster occurs if it has the same sheen as the glass so Nga na siya kahamison sa glass. Metallic, so a mineral has the same appearance as a polished metal. So para ano, kana, ginagamit na to na, um, si tao kana, kana bolo, or kana ginagamit sa sinaunang panan, just like samurai, or kana, ginagamit usually sa tong mga palayan. So they have this metallic luster. Now we are done with the third physical properties. Let's proceed to the fourth one, which is the crystal habit. So dami pala ng physical properties. Crystal habit. So crystal habit is the characteristic shape in which mineral grows. And is a projection of the mineral's internal structure. So some common habits are acicular, blocky, tabular, fibrous, bladed, linatic, prismatic. Ganyan. So basta always sa mamarlang class that crystal habit refers to the shape, 
shape, the shape in which the mineral grows. So, unsay, unsay form niya sa pagtubo. Like, for example, pa pataas ba siya? Pa, pa widen ba siya? Or pa expand ba siya? Yan na. Okay, so we have very different types of crystal habits. So, this one, the first one is naturalite, which has a, which has an acicular crystal habit. Next one is oligoclase. Ito. Meron siyang blocky crystal habit. Barite, tabular. Then, okinite, meron siyang fibrous kasi nga meron siyang outer extensions na ako na gumaobserve na to sa mold class. Actually, mold, um, meron siyang fibrous, um, fibrous na physical appearance. So, same also that goes in this type of mineral. Meron siyang fibrous crystal habit. The next one is copper, then dry thick, tapos ay meron pa lang actinolite. It has bladed kasi nga patulis yung kanyang rock formation. Then, copper has dendritic. And then, endocolite. Endocolite has a prismatic crystal habit. Maraming dami. Okay. Now, let's proceed to the description on each of those crystal habits. So, when we say a secular, needle-like. So, that means, kanang Sa nido, good ka ng talinis. So, it is wider than fibrous, but thinner than prismatic. So, blocky, its shape is rectangular. So, just like block, di ba? By rectangular, man po na ilang formation or ilang shape. But the sides are not necessarily flat. Tabular, they're tablet-like and then it has flat squares. Fibrous, they are fury like its sides are thinner than a secular bladed its shape like a knife then dry thick plant like and then prismatic pencil like or its sides are thicker than a secular so those are the different um description for each of those crystal habits Next one is cleavage. Now, when it comes to mineralogy, cleavage is defined um, as other or denotes another meaning. So, cleavage is the tendency of the minerals to break along flat surfaces. So, that means class cleavage refers to the way. Um, some minerals break along certain lines of weakness in their structure. So, these surfaces have the weakest atomic bonding, which means that when you use a hammer to break a mineral, it will always break along these points. Kasi nga, ito yung point where where they have or where where it has the weakest atomic bonding kaya nga madali lang siyang um, i-break by using hammer or by just um, throwing the raw or the minerals on the ground talagang mababasag na siya along these points or along these weak points now cleavage surfaces tend to occur repetitively as parallel planes at crystal breaks, which constitute a set of direction of cleavage. Now, the illustration shows some of the types of cleavage planes. So, ito daw yun. Now, we have one plane cleavage, two planes cleavage, and three plane cleavage. Uh, these are the different types of cleavage planes. Okay. Now, let us just go to the uh, description. So, first one. 
first type of cleavage is the basal. So number of cleavage, it has only one cleavage. Description, planes on top of the other. Let me just check. Yes, this one. So the map sa basal, makain kang more sharp hexagonal, and then I know. Pen yes, hexagonal ayang cleave ayang sides. Tapos ma break siya along the surface. I mean, more gusto ma break siya across. Ana. Next next one is the press. Two cleavage, and it has cleavage at right angles. Okay, to the na one prismatic ka ito. So that means it has two planes of cleavage. Tapos it has two cleavage on its right angle. Na next one is non prismatic. Tapos meron din siyang dalawang cleavage. However, it is not located on its right angle. Kasi nga, pala siya, more siya nahiwi, good ka man, more siya diamond in shape. Sa prismatic mga good, more siya perfect square. Kaya visible yung right angle, kung asa i-locate yung right angle. Now, si prismatic, pala siya nakatagilid gamay. So, it has top leverages, but it doesn't have right angle. Or the cleavage is not located on its right angle. Next one is cubic, so it has three planes of cleavage, and then the cleavage is located on its right angle. So the rhombohedral, it is three cleavage also, and then it doesn't have a right angle. So for the octahedral, it has four cleavage planes then it formed eight faces the sphalerite or the sphalerite has actually four cleavage then it forms 12 faces okay now next one is the fracture now fracture is the pattern when minerals break aside from its planes of Cleavage. So this happens when the atomic bonds are of equal strength. Unlike cleavage, the fracture does not. I'm sorry, na maliki line. Ano siya? Mali na po. Okay. Yan. So unlike cleavage, fractures does not break along planes. It just breaks unevenly. Various types of fractures exist in nature, such as conchoidal, jagged, uneven, and splintery. Now, ang kalahian mga good class ni cleavage o ni fracture. Kasi cleavage, mo break siya along the plane in which katupod siya nga plane na ito siya weakest atomic bonding. Kinamanggod si cleavage, eh, kinamanggod si fracture, Balik kan agong tuyo on your job break. Tapos, those points na mag-break, mo ito siya ang naay strongest atomic bonding. So, same good nag-yapon class sa, yun tayo, magka-fracture ang isa ka tao sa isa ka, kaysa magka-fracture ka sa imong arm. Diba, ang makita man na ito, usually kay mag-break siya along the surface. Kanang more good, Mag-break siya sa yung center of, ano good, center of gravity. Same also goes with minerals. Bali, kung tuyuon siya yung moog break, then that pertains to the fracture. Sa cleavage mga good, these are the, the, the point na weakest siya. So, no matter kung saan mo siya pag-amping, or mas kiibotang lang na niyo mo siya, tapos matandog lang siya gamay, mag- mag-break na siya along the planes because those planes have the weak, weakest atomic bonding. Compared man sa fracture na dili siya mo go along kung asa si weak, kung asa si um, medyo um, strong. Basta iya ha, ma-break lang din siya on the strongest 
or on atomic bonds that have equal strength. So that means, maski strong ang atomic bonding on that certain direction or certain point, kung tuyuon yun siya break ni mo, so, diya ito siya moagi or diya ito moagi ang yahang fracture. Okay, so these are the different types of fracture. We have first one, conchoidal. So, conchoidal, the fracture here looks like a semicircular shell. Mm, okay. Next one is jagged. Fracture appears as jagged and it has a sharp and rough surface. Let me just check. Okay. So, ito do yung conchoidal class. Conchoidal ito. And then, si jagged. Copper has a jagged fracture. O ni iya ha? And then, si kyanite has a splintery fracture. So, atong tanaw na yung description again. Now, conchoidal, fracture looks like a Same circular shell. Mm. Same that goes for obsidian. This one. Now, jagged. Fracture appears as jagged points. It has sharp and rough surfaces. Now, for the splintery. Splintery. Meron siyang splintery fibrous like structure. For the... For the uneven fracture, it has rough and irregular fracture. Tapos, common daw siya in most minerals. So, bali, kinin conchoidal, jagged, and splinter. Dili kayo ni siya makita na to sa minerals. Ay, saka minerals. Because, what's, I mean, the, the most common type of fracture na to makita in most minerals are actually an even one or an even type of structure. Fracture. All right. So now always remember that cleavage and fracture talks about break and mineral. So cleavage is when a mineral breaks along cleavage points. So this cleavage point have weakest atomic bond or atomic bonding. However. Fracture is when mineral breaks unevenly. Ana, so, dili niya ginakonsider kung weakest or kung naaba siya sa cleavage plane or weakest atomic bonding ba to sa isa kamera. Basta, so, yeah, fracture dyan siya ka ng word. Makat ni mo ang isa ka minerals on on surfaces or on area or direction which has it or which has an equal amount of atomic bonding. So, dili siya weak, but instead, meron siyang equal um, atomic connection. So, muna ko siya makonsider na to a strong atomic connection kasi nga equal yung binibigay ng bawat atom compared mga sa cleavage na mag-break siya on its weakest point or weakest atomic bonding. Now, the next one is hardness. Now, hardness is the resistance of the minerals to scratching. So, it is measured It is measured by scratching the mineral with another object of known hardness. For more accurate measurement, the most scale of hardness is used, which is composed of 10 minerals, numbered from 1 to 10. 1 as the softest and 10 as the hardest. The most scale is a relative scale, not qualitative, which means that gypsum is not twice as hard as tack. Only the gypsum is harder than tack. Kining tack class mo ni siya ang kasagaran ng mga minerals na makita na to sa tong, um, sa mga cosmetics na ginagamit for makes up, for makeup, for ano pa? 
parang pulbus na to Yan na mo na siya ginagamit na mineral. Okay. So, by considering or by just observing the Mohs scale of hardness, now we can say that stock is actually the softest. Tapos, yung pinaka hard talaga is the diamond. Now, stock can be scratched by gypsum. Gypsum can be scratched by calcite. Calcite can be scratched by fluorite. Fluorite mineral. Fluorite can be um, scratched by apatite. Same also goes with apatite, which can be scratched by feldspar. Then, feldspar can be scratched using quartz minerals. Quartz for topaz, I mean, quartz can be scratched with topaz. Corundum, a topaz can be scratched with corundum minerals. Tapos, ang minerals ang po na maka-scratch ni corundum is the diamond. Now, diamond, wala na maka-scratch ano niya, class. That's because diamond mineral is the strongest, or I mean, is the hardest of all types of minerals. Now, the Mohs scale of hardness was named after its proponent, Friedrich Mohs. Okay. This is uh, the life story of Friedrich Mohs. So, labas ninyo kung basahan ninyo or dili. Now, he discovered the varying hardness of minerals and later designed a systematic classification of this property using a scratch test. Kaya nga na-create ang most hardness scale or most scale of hardness most scale of hardness okay now let us go to the specific gravity now specific gravity is the ratio of the minerals weight to the weight of an equal volume of water. Therefore, a specific gravity of 4 means that a certain substance is 4 times heavier than water. The size of the minerals is independent of its specific gravity. This means that a larger sample can still yield a smaller specific gravity. Now, so, the table thou shows the arrangement of the minerals which have the lowest to highest specific gravity. Now, in other words, class, specific gravity is a measurement that is used by most mineralogists to determine the density of the mineral. So, that means, kung unsa kabugat ang isa ka minerals. So, two minerals can be of the same size, but their weight may be different. So, in other words, specific gravity is, of course, the hardness. I, no, not the hardness. The heaviness. It's the heaviness of a mineral. So, kung unsa kabuga to, unsa yung density, that pertains to the mineral's heaviness. So, here, we can observe that top have the lowest specific gravity of 2.8 followed by diamond copper silver mercury mercury and the one with the high specific gravity is the gold okay so i'll just end my discussion here on the physical properties then let's proceed with the chemical properties of minerals on the next video